Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Vindo with Robert Hollinshead. And actually, uh, another special guest this week, Larry Feldman uh, of Career Changers USA, training and recruiting company. So that's that's all that uh, official stuff out of the way, gentlemen. I'm going to turn it over to Bob, and uh, let's have this uh, fun and lively conversation. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Shoni. So just to, in case anybody cares, which I'm sure they don't, uh, Larry's one of my favorite people because, in other words, if you happen to be depressed, you, you will only be depressed about three seconds uh, if you got him in your company. Larry, i got to ask you a couple quick questions just to give some background on your pedigree, right? You you were never in the car business, right? So you're a pontificator telling people how to sell cars and how to train people, but you never were in the car business, and none of your family was either, were they? Yeah, correct. Other other than my brother that owned four dealerships and my brother who every other wholesaler refers to, I was number two in the country for Cadillac. I wound up being a partner at our Cadillac store. Um, other than that, Bob, a no, you know, no coherent. I, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. So when I met your brother in 1972, 1972 as a wholesaler, and he actually got me uh, thinking about being in that business, and that happens to be a true story. He doesn't take any credit for it because I guess he doesn't want to embarrass himself, but it, it happens to be true. Um, and when you say you were number two in the country, so you have sold a few cars. In other words, you can get on a showroom floor and actually not tell people how it's done, but actually shove them out of the way and do it. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, but but what's really so funny about that, Bob, is how simplistic this is. You know, with all the AI tools available and everything floating around, it still comes back to looking people in the eye and smiling. Bob, I, I ask this all over the country and sometimes in Canada when I'm training. What do you say to the guy that says, I only have 10 minutes. I got to go watch my son play ball. The answer is not, I can do it in 10 minutes. The answer is, what does your son do? We don't know how to start conversations. We don't know how to shout that we're interested in the people that are paying our salary. And we kiss all the wrong butts, Bob. We, we, we kiss our manager's butt and the owner's butt. They don't really pay you. They're the middle guys handling the money. If we just are human, if we just make people smile, if we show we care, this is easy. It's it's funny that you say that, Larry, because it's actually it, it's not just true in a showroom. It's true in everything you do. It's definitely true in Hoseal, um, where we put down a rule book sometimes and actually uh, connect with the people you're doing business with uh, at retail or wholesale level. Um, it's it's absolutely flabbergasting how you can break. Uh, um, it's it's what your friend Ron Schwartz says. You can. Diffuse the bomb. If you pull the fuse out of the bomb, what what good is the bomb? The bomb has no meaning any longer. You got to find out how you're not going to let it go off. And it goes to exactly what you just said. You got to actually analyze the circumstance and, and figure out how you're going to make it positive out of a negative, right? Yeah. It's definitely well, how true. How negative can it be, Bob, when somebody comes in to spend their money? You know, I, I always love to say they're not annoyances, they're annuities. These people, unless you're selling the Unabomber car, these people have friends, family, relatives. And it's just as easy when you say, what a nice car, where'd you get it? It's just as easy to say, man, go see this guy. He was fabulous. Than it is to say, don't go there. They're horrible. It's true. So, Larry, so you've been around this, you know, you've been around the car business for a long time and have been fairly successful uh, and been around successful people. Um and you've actually seen over time um, what my perception is, how the, uh, I don't want to say this wrong, but the, the, the people that are entering the business are not the same as they used to be. Do you see that in, when you get in a room full of people that you're selecting as candidates for a dealership? I, I see it in general in society, and I don't want to sound like a grumpy old guy, but right. we're, we're in a country <laughs> Um, and forget politics. We're in a country where people all over the planet risk their lives to come here because they see opportunity. A and that people, a lot of the people that live here don't appreciate the opportunity. You have to understand that virtue is its own reward because they've stopped giving out trophies. You got to get up in the morning and say, man, I can't wait to go in, have some fun, make some money, come home and enjoy time with my friends and family. But if your attitude is, I can't wait to get on to my, my phone and look at Facebook for 11 hours, I don't know what you're doing. When, when I get young guys, Bob, I say, listen, I'm not looking to lecture you. 
I'm just telling you, if you're going to be somewhere for eight hours, why not make it productive? How much fun is it to look at your iPhone or your computer or God forbid you wear a watch and say, wow, it's time to go home. Isn't that better than being bored? It's not complicated. It, it really isn't, but it's almost impossible to distract people or, or to uh, uh, um, get that through their brain because it, all communication happens through the, uh, the new way of communicating. That really, I think, is what makes it an opportunity for people in the business that actually uh, um, use some of the time-tested uh, 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 methodologies to, uh, to do what they do, if, uh, unless I'm wrong. Are you talking about the electric cattle prod? Because I always found that useful with salesmen when I was managing, Bob. <laughs> the electric cattle prod? And how exactly did you use that, Larry? Uh, I'm going to have to check that with 11 different HR organizations, but I, I will submit a seven-page uh, report to you, Bob, right after the show, if there still is a show when I'm done. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. So what do you see as the trends for this uh, uh, coming uh, year in your in your business, Larry? Okay. Um, are you talking about in terms of recruiting and training? Or you talk, or, can I talk about that if I'm brief? That's and also exactly what, that's why we got you on the, that's why we have you on the phone, pal. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. I, I thought you would, I thought I heard you mutter you couldn't get anybody that was sane. So I was the second choice, but that's okay. Um, I see my business as growing exponentially. I've, I've picked up six different dealer groups in the last uh, 40 days, and I see it continue to grow because with the turmoil, with the difference in the profit structures, um, and maybe management being a little too busy uh, to find the people and interview the people and put the process together, uh, I'm super excited about 2024. And any dealer out there that's worried should not be because it's i'm from philadelphia i'm going to refer to an old philadelphia singer jerry butler only the strong survive the people that have taken the time to train their people and realize that one day it wouldn't be just pointed a car and say it's seven thousand over list have probably already started to turn the ship around but for me i'm excited about training uh getting people motivated making them excited to go to work um, with the recruiting continues to grow, as you know, Bob, because you've referred me to plenty of people. We seem to be one of the few organizations out there that can find technicians and at a reasonable price. So I'm excited. And as far as the industry, if there's dealers listening, keep your head up. OK, it may not be easy, but we've already been through right the meltdown in 2008. Uh, you know, manufacturers telling dealers you're terrific, but we decided to downsize. You're no longer a franchise. Um, hey, I was a little too young, but I can remember in 73 when you couldn't get gas, you had to go on alternate days. Somehow we survived that. We, we seem to be the most resilient business people around, uh, and we will get through this. But just be prepared for a, a couple little bumps in the road because it'd be foolish not to say that they're coming. It's funny you should say 73. That's when your brother and I were out siphoning gas because there was no gas locks on the gas gaps in order to get the cars across the bridge to Bordentown. I'm so surprised you would bring that topic up. Let me ask you another quick question, pal, because I see that you go to all of the conferences everywhere about conferences on top of conferences and you have pontificators telling dealers how to do things. Is it my imagination or is there a huge amount of there's layers of things that are really not necessary if dealers block and tackle, uh, you know, they just do basic things. Is, is there any magic out there that you see? Tell the truth. Like when okay. somebody's selling a thing because they got a thing and they show you how to do a thing. But it all, all right. it all boils down to like basic things. Am I wrong about that? Here's how right you are. The last class I had, uh, I had a lot of football fans. And you, Bob, you see me in action. I, I steer my class to whoever's in my class. I want to make them feel they're part of it. And I said, I've been on record, on record, saying that we'll know how good Bill Belichick is when Tom Brady leaves. I said this three years before he left the Patriots. And I explained that in my humble opinion, the greatest football coach ever was Vince Lombardi because he took a team that was 1-10-1 and one, and won five out of six championship games. He lost to our Eagles in 60. That was our big claim to fame till Nick Foles showed up. All, all Lombardi did Wait, was wait, hold, hold that thought. And one of the first cars I ever sold 
what was to one of those Eagles, you follow me, that played in yeah. that game, Chuck Bednarik. You follow me? I sold Iron. him two cars for his daughters. I sold him two cars to his daughters after he had retired from the Eagles, and he played in that game. Bob, I'm just Bob, saying. Tell him how tough he was and that he played every minute of the game, offense and defense. <clears throat> And he loved to show you his broken finger because his pinky finger was on a 90-degree angle from being smashed. You follow me? Yep. That, just but a side he, note. But here's the deal. He won five out of six, and everybody in the league knew he was going to run the Lombardi sweep to the right end of the line. How come nobody could stop him? Because everybody blocked and tackled. Everybody hit their block. The holes were always open, and he ran his guys to the point they wanted to kill him. Because he said famously, fatigue makes cowards of us all. He said, when everybody else is tired at the end of the game, I want you to be in shape. So it, it's definitely all about blocking and tackling. Now, as far as the conferences, every once in a while, you hear somebody that cuts through the nonsense and has insight. There's this guy, you might have heard of him, you might not, Bob, named Brian Kramer. He tends to put in the <laughs> You got to admit, you got to love the guy, though. You got to admit to that, right? Absolutely. Um, but let me let me make you laugh, Bob, because Bob, as everybody that's listening to this know, Bob is the original no BS guy. Cuts right to it. Hold on, Bob. My phone's going off. I'll, I'll shut it off so my girl can get it. Um, the bottom line is, when I go to these conferences, I hear the same complaint all the time. And I mean all the time, and you'll laugh. Oh, there weren't enough dealers there. Bob, I got to tell you, you know why I love the conferences? I buddy up with the other vendors and convince them that I'll bring such value with recruiting and training that the dealership will get stronger and whatever you're selling will be easy to sell because they'll be in the black rather than in the red. So again, it's all your perspective. Bob, there's a famous story, it's cliched, some of you guys have heard it, that they send two shoe salesmen to the most remote part of Africa, the most remote. And one guy sends back a telegram and says, why the hell would you send me here? Nobody wears shoes. And the other guy says, thanks for sending me here. Everybody here needs shoes. So it's all your perspective. If you're going to look for a specific thing and you say, well, I, I understand what Kramer said. I understand what this guy said. I understand. It's, it's good. It's where your head's at. Bob, how many guys right. have you known that go to these conferences to get away from their wives or their girlfriends and goof off for three days? It's your perspective. I go to these places to shake hands, tell a couple jokes, make some friends. And then when I'm done with that, say, listen, you tell your dealers, I can find people, including techs, and I'll get their guys running through a wall. So for me, it's good. But but we all know that, that a lot of people have trouble saying anything in less than 40 minutes. Uh, concise is better. To the point is better. Here's what it is. Here's what I do. Here's why you need me. Yeah. It just, uh, I, I thought it was just me. Every time, well, I don't go to them anymore, but when I went to these conventions or whatever you want to call them, meetings, whatever, you never met a dealer. You only met other vendors. And the vast majority of the vendors were basically on a, a new job hunt, telling everybody about the last place they worked. You, you just don't find uh, customers. Customers don't show up there. It's just other vendors. And and that actually brings it to my mind how dealers wind up with vendor fatigue. Nobody that's actually I explaining the, the facts that you got to block and tackle. In other words, nobody's going to show up with some sort of new, uh, fantastic AI it, it, it infused technology that's going to help you buy and sell cars. Uh, how you're going to actually engage customers and have them trust you where you can actually sell them a car. You can show them all the pictures you want. Somebody's still got to be in contact with them, and you got to have somebody that has the understanding of how you can converse with somebody to get the job done. It's uh, it's pretty, I don't know, maybe uh, as you get older, you, you get a little brittle or something. But uh, to me, if, I were, if I'm a car dealer, like uh, you're being completely bombarded by everybody's new and better solution. Uh, it's it's pretty fascinating to me. It's one of the main reasons why I've told you from the beginning when you started this, um, you're going to be wildly successful if you get in front of people because it's it's there really is no bullshit. There, there it is. It's separate from being entertaining because you're a funny guy and not a funny silly guy, but a funny guy that actually understands things from uh, you know wearing your shoes out in showrooms uh, and, and being in a business that you, you really truly understand. You really could learn something from, uh, especially if you're somebody new or a, a refresher course with new material 
for managers to get worn out from trying to act like they're up and, and ready and, and ready to fight and so forth. Sometimes a little infusion of uh, things, it, 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 can, it can be very uh, uh, useful in my estimation. Can I, can, I, can I give you an example just because I think you'll get, a, you'll get a chuckle out of it. You're one of my best buddies. I love to make you laugh. I was working with a dealer in Virginia, and it was kind of a pig and a poke, Bob, because I recruit for them and I train for them. So they said, we need to just get in and get everybody psyched up. So I'm in the room, and half the people I hired, two of the managers are in. They like me. They know they're going to learn and have some fun. And a guy stands up to me, and I could tell he wasn't into it. I didn't hire him. I don't know where he came from. And he says, and I'll edit myself, Bob, so you don't get in trouble. He says, quote, if you're so effing smart, what do you say to the guy that says, why should I buy from you instead of the other dealer? You know, I won't say the make or model. I want to get me in trouble. And he pointed to the managers and said, because they don't have a good idea. And they look like deers in the headlight. Now, you know, I love being put on the spot because I teach people to think, not to memorize dialogue. So I looked at them, thought for a second and said, why don't you tell them you're greedy? So they all started laughing at me. They figured I was having a nervous breakdown, right? What a dumb answer. I said, whoa, whoa, don't laugh. You be the customer, I'll be the salesman. He said, okay, why should I buy from you instead of the other dealer? I said, because I'm greedy. He says, that sounds like BS. I said, does it? I bet you're just like me and you bought something from somebody. It didn't have to be a car. Could have been a fancy chair, a painting, a big screen TV, a watch. They were your best friend to get your money. And then when you had a problem, you couldn't find him. I hate that, don't you? He goes, yeah. I said, well, that guy wasn't greedy. All he wanted to do was sell you one car or one watch or one painting. I want to sell every you have, everybody you ever met in your life a car. I'm going to be your personal concierge. You always want to buy from people who are greedy in the sense that they'll keep you happy to get more of your money. So I think in today's world where people are distracted easy, you got to have energy, you got to have a sense of humor, and you've got to make it plain to them why. I always say if you have a dog, I'm a dog lover, and you point, your dog never looks where you're pointing, he looks at your finger. Our job is, my job, is to get managers, salespeople, to look in the direction they're pointing. Uh, unbelievable. So, so Shoni, I, in my estimation, th- this is volume one of uh, the, Larry, the Larry Feldman uh, version of uh, the Sean show. Uh, because it, it initially, you know, we're, we're uh, trying to make something sound like it makes sense. But I think Larry has enough to say for actual car dealers that we'd love to have you back, Larry, if that's okay with you. Uh, because sure. uh, 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 I think there's stuff here that, uh, you know, the average guy driving to work uh, tomorrow morning when they're listening to this uh, it could find it entertaining, but also useful when they get to the dealership or to the auction. And I appreciate you coming in, my brother. My Always pleasure. Good Thanks to you so much to you and Sean for having me. Thank you, Shawnee. Thanks, everyone. We put Sean to sleep. No, you still no I'm okay. good. I'm good. I, I, I just wanted to say, I think Larry's going to be uh, one of the most important uh, people going through the next uh, transition through the car market. I mean, listen, we, as Bob says, we're coming off the high of the last three years, four years. Um, there's going to be some changes and some needed uh, needed conversations to be had around the dealership. So this is perfect. Yeah. Block and Sean, tackle. Um, dig, dig, dig. Sean, two things. Uh, I, I, I just had a, a dealer say to me, he, he was in the back of the room because he heard I was a little nuts. And he said, Larry, I think you're crazy, but I watched you have 20 people in a room for three and a half hours and nobody looked at your iPhone. He said, I didn't think that was possible. The second thing, Sean, is if you think I'm important, <laughs> Would you please have a conversation with my wife? Because I think she has a differing opinion. <laughs> Fair comment. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, everybody. Have fun, guys. Thank you so much, guys.